Well, first off, congratulations on the film. Thank you. Uh, I w literally watched it, finished watching it about an hour ago, so it's quite it's quite fresh in my mind. And I've still not to spoil it for anybody, but I've still got the the final few minutes uh, in my in my head, which really I won't uh, I won't spoil for anybody. But uh, yeah, it's quite. It's quite a, it's quite an ending to the to the film. Um, I just wanted to begin with just asking, what was it about this story and these characters that kind of appealed to you? Because it's such a, a wonderful story and really touching and really moving, but but so so kind of important in terms of its themes. So I can imagine there was lots of reasons to to get involved. But uh, for you specifically, what was it about about this project that that kind of spoke to you? Um. Well, it's not often that I'll read a script and it'll make me tear up just you know sitting there and you know I, I can't and, and if it's something you can't put down that's also very hard to find which this script did, did both things for me um yeah I read a lot of them that I it doesn't always elicit such an emotional reaction but the story was uh very touching and Iris Dearborn my character was very um layered and had a lot of vulnerability, which I thought would be a really fun challenge. And then as soon as I spoke to Martha Stevens, um, we uh, we FaceTimed before I took the role. And as soon as I heard her vision, she talked about wanting the movie to be black and white. And she just had, I, I just felt very connected to it. And like, I really, really, really wanted to be a part of it. It was one of those stories that I just fell in love with and couldn't let go of. I'm, I'm interested now that you've said that it was going to be in black and white, that would have been quite a, quite an artistic leap. Do you know why she, uh, why you do, Martha sort of changed her mind with that and went, went for color or was that something that, that was kind of in the early stages? That, um, that happened when uh, distribution came around. We were always, we filmed it in both black and white and color. So that was something that like, um, the set dressers and wardrobe and everyone had to be incredibly uh, mindful of was that we were in the middle of getting it both in black and white and color. So that way we had either version. Um, and we played in black and white through the festivals we went to like uh, Sundance Film Festival and Carlo Berry in Prague. Um, yeah, we played in black and white. And I think the festival version's available on iTunes and Amazon as well. So we have it out for people in both black and white and color who want to see it. You join the mix of Mad Max and Logan with a, with a black and white version available <laughs> to fans if they want to seek it out. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I was also going to ask you about Sundance. It's obviously the film premiered, I think, last, last year. So it's one of those that's kind of, obviously, obviously films take various different reasons for, for taking time. But how was your, how was your experience with Sundance? Because it feels like it's, that was the kind of the right home for the film and a good kind of platform to, to, to launch it in many ways, because it is very Sundance, but it touches on the sort of themes and the stories that that, that, that festival seems to really grasp at and really, really want to share with the world. Yeah, we had a really wonderful response from people, from uh, the audiences at uh, Sundance. Um, it was really amazing. I had never been, and it was so welcoming, and it was such a little, it's it's just funny, the way they take this little street and they just completely change everything there for this little festival that comes once a year. It's it's just really, uh, it's surreal, is what it was. It was an honor, uh, and it was very surreal. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about Iris. I mean, she's such a wonderful uh, character. She's very kind of complex, and she has a lot of, Kind of stuff going on that she wants to wants to do but she's very interior so i can imagine for an actress it's a character that you can't wait to kind of get your sink your teeth into because there's so much to her and so much to also to discover and for her to kind of kind of blossom as the film goes on i mean what what, what stuck in your your mind with her what was it about her and her her journey that kind of made you as an actress want to want to tackle it because there's, there's lots going on in in iris's in character mm -hmm. I loved her arc. She's so dynamic uh, throughout the whole story. She's evolving. Um, I loved the way she's kind of uh, within herself. So all of her reactions and things are very, um, well, they're kind of internal and sort of subtle. And so it's a real challenge to make it just subtle enough that it plays on camera so that the audience can understand Iris. Um, Plus, I just felt like I had been kind of uh, an anxious teenager because I was in um, the film business and I also went to public school. So I felt a little bit isolated because I was doing something very different that not a lot of people around me understood. Uh, so in that way, I just related to this kind of 
isolated character. Yeah, it does. It does have such a great job of of the kind of the high school because obviously set in the set in the period that it's set in, it's very it seems very contemporary and that a lot of the things and the themes and the, the stories that, that, that being told with all these characters is very prevalent to, to now in terms of, you know, tolerance and compassion yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And it, it feels like it's, it's the, 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 the period is such a great platform to tell these, to tell these stories. Did you, did you feel that, that even though it was set in the sixties, that it was such a prevalent, so many prevalent themes that, that modern audiences would, would grasp on them and go, yes, this is something that is still quite, quite rife and still things that need to be changed. Absolutely. I think that there's uh, a general message throughout the film about kindness and about the way you treat other people that I think is universal and timeless and carries well into now, uh, especially now that we have the internet and cyberbullying has become a thing. <laughs> um, I think it's just definitely a way for people to look back and see, um, see certain behaviors and understand that they are outdated. And um, well, I hope that anyone going through anything like that can also connect to these characters and feel hope and understood. Yeah, also, I mean, the setting is fantastic. I mean, the, the set design and the costumes and the, you know, even little things like the houses and the cars, it must have been such a great experience stepping into a world I that made an amazing is, job that. yeah, amazing. But it must be great for you, not just for yourself, but for you as actors and, as, as, and, the, and the filmmakers and everyone a part of the film to kind of step out of the modern world and step into to that world, given that it was so, rich and so uh, full of everything. I mean, people talk about Bobby Darren and then there's the hair salon and then there's you know, <laughs> the restaurants and the drive-ins and all that kind of stuff. It must've been great to kind of spend some time out of the modern day and step back in time in, in many ways and kind of free yourself from, from, from modern things such as mobile phones and all that kind of stuff. That must've been such a freeing experience. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, um, I was really impressed by Martha Stevens' knowledge of mid-century, uh, well, everything. Um, she's the type of person who, if you if you were to show her um, like a vintage dining set, she could tell you what decade it was from just by the patterns. I I just think that's so impressive. And she just she made this really specific and special world. And she and um, the locations people did an amazing job of finding. Uh, little lost relics of time. Uh, we had like an all wood paneled um, school gym, if you remember that, which I thought was just so fantastic. And also the costumes are really worth pointing out. Women in 19, the 1960s did not dress comfortably. That was something all the actresses and I we helped us get into costume because we felt repressed just from what we were wearing. So it kind of, it forced you to compensate maybe i don't know i don't know what the word is but it definitely helps you get into the uh the character and the setting in the time period yeah I, i'm sure the uh the kind of the dance you know when uh, the iris goes to the dance with the with her with her with possible boyfriend i mean you can kind of get the sense of just how awkward those things must have been back in the day you know what i mean whereas now you could just there's hundreds of people in a club or something where you could just talk to people yeah, it, was yeah. it was quite staid and quite but quite sweet in its way i mean it there's a real sweetness to the film i mean that that must be something that when you were the script and you saw the final film that that, that came across so strongly that there is a, a sweetness to it, but also coupled with this really important message. Right. And also just the experience of filming this movie was one of my, it's, it's one of my favorite filming experiences that I've ever had. So really it's also so sweet to me. Well, it's bittersweet because I really miss filming it, but at the same time watching it back uh, brings back so many wonderful memories and, I made so many lovely friends with people on that cast and crew. So yeah, uh, very sweet. Um, really came through for me. Makes me feel emotional every time I, I see it. Yeah, I can imagine. You touched upon the, the, the cast there. I can't not mention Liana and, and the character of Maggie that comes into Iris's world and kind of, it's like a lightning bolt in many ways that she, yeah. you know Maggie try and kind of helps to free her from 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 her from her life and trying to you know become more confident and then become uh, you know maybe the woman that she's supposed to be in the future. I mean, what was that? How easy was it to, for you two to grasp that relationship? Because it, almost immediately the two of you have such a wonderful chemistry and it really feeds into the to the relationship and makes it so strong on the screen. Uh, she and I really oh thank you, but uh, she and I connected pretty much immediately as soon as we met. We met for a. Uh, a chemistry reading with uh, Martha Stevens, the director, um, and we just immediately hit it off. I saw her and I heard the way she read the lines and I was like, there's no, there's, there's no question to me. She just felt like Maggie. You could, she has this 
fire and this, um, she's just a really radiant actress. And so I was very happy when she became Maggie and I was uh, very lucky to have a really great time working with her. Absolutely, it really comes across on the screen, you two. Um, I just wanted to mention about the, you know, obviously I mentioned about the, don't wanna to go too much into the ending or where the film goes, but it, it must be satisfying to know that this, it was such an important story that it's there kind of warts and all, like, you know, it, it isn't a very it's kind of a, a bow tied kind of story. There isn't, there's, there's real kind of world things that happen in the movie and things that, that kind of transpire as the film goes on and you're left with this, you know, a, a, a kind of mixed feelings towards the end. But you must be happy that Maggie's made a film that doesn't shy away from, from what the film's trying to say and doesn't shy away from the fact that, you know, as much as you'd love it to be kind of a, a you know, a, have a fairy tale kind of ending that, you know, sometimes life isn't like that. Right, you have to consider where you are and when and all sorts of other things. But I think we, we uh, left it so that there's a lot of uh, possibility in the audience's imagination. And I hope that they appreciate that because I really, we, we've had um, the cast and I had a lot of fun coming up with different theories as to what yeah, it's almost like a comic book movie, isn't it? In the terms of the, there'll be people making their own <laughs> their own ideas as to what happens at the end. I have my own idea, yeah. but I won't I won't spoil it for anybody. Um, just as a final question, Emma, because I know you have to go soon. But I mean, obviously, it's a it's a very American th film, but because of the narrative and everything, it kind of crosses crosses boundaries, crosses countries, everything else. How how are you hopeful that a Brit British audience kind of takes to this one because of the themes and because even though it's set in an American setting, that it, it's very universal in that way, and you're hoping that they kind of embrace it in the same way. Absolutely, yeah. I think the I think the story and the message is pretty universal and pretty timeless. It's one of the things I loved about it is that I felt like it could be a classic. It could be a lost relic of or uh, like a lost movie almost. That's one of the things Martha always talked about seeing the script as. She said it's like she found a lost script from you know when they made studio movies a bit more uh, like well like like to the stars. <laughs> So I think, um, yeah, I just really hope that audiences everywhere love it. I'm sure they will. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, uh, Cara, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. And uh, stay safe. And uh, uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing the movie again. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks yeah, so you much. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!